Hello, and thank you so much for joining us today. We are so pleased that you are here and truly honored to have the opportunity to share our stories with you. My name is Stephanie Kroon, and I am a holistic nutritionist, and formerly for 15 years, I was a pharmaceutical sales rep. Today, you will hear four unique stories told by parents of children with multiple complex neurological diagnoses, such as ADHD, autism, sensory processing disorder, depression, anxiety, just to name a few. We are parents that were on a path for answers. We are parents that were not willing to settle for conventional medication and the side effects our children can and some were experiencing because of it. We are parents that are on a mission to empower and give hope to other parents just like you that are seeking answers. Although our stories are different, we all chose to activate our children's bodies and the results have been absolutely amazing. So to start us off, I'm super excited to introduce my first guest and friend, Shannon Wilkie, who works as an educational advocate and her entire career has been in disability services. She is the mother to one exceptional son and I'm excited for her to share her story today. So take it away, Shannon. Thanks, Steph. He is exceptional and he is a handful, an exceptional handful. Um, and I still wasn't prepared. All those years in, in work have not prepared me for parenting my son, Hayden. My husband, Adam, and I adopted Hayden and he was, he was just born, so right at birth. And uh, we realized early on by about two that he'd have some exceptional needs with his exceptional personality. Um, and so by kindergarten, he was diagnosed with ADHD with a really big focus on the HD. He was very active, very hyperactive, very impulsive. And he also had some, has some sensory integration, um, sensory processing disorder. And our life just became one appointment after the other. It's all a big blur. We were driving around, you know, getting regular phone calls from the school. They weren't good phone calls. They were phone calls to come pick him up or, you know, the conduct referral phone calls. He was struggling. And it was frustrating because I knew my little boy and he wanted to do good. And I could see that side of him. And he, was, he wasn't doing well. He wasn't living to his potential. Um, and we had this army of people working with him at that time and it wasn't uncommon for us to hear from our occupational therapist, psychiatrist, psychologist, play therapist, you know how it goes. It wasn't uncommon to hear, we don't know what to do. We, we exhausted everything and that frightened me to my core to the point of making a really big decision to leave the university I was working at um, so I could dedicate more time to him and start to be the change and I became an education advocate to find out that this was a lot of client stories. Um, there's, you know, ADHD, autism, anxiety are so prevalent. Families are running around doing all of these things that we are, have all done and, and more. And the answers weren't, um, they weren't clear. We, we have all this work and little progress, um, not a lot of change. So at that time, Hayden was on three medications, and one being a very heavy hitting medication to the point when I first gave it to him, I had to leave the room and cry. Um, I, that week, had a client um, that I met with in person, and she shared her story, and I met her son, and her story was different than other clients. She had gotten off medication, and, and school was going much better, and I don't hear that. I just rarely hear that. No, I've never heard that. Um, so... Fast forward a year, I took a leap of faith and tried the product that she had told me about. And our son Hayden is nerf activated. He's, you know, we see the little boy that we knew was there. Um, he's made so many strides. Our family is so much better. Um, we're, we're just going um, on a trip that we had canceled last year. He plays with his cousin and they have become great friends. Um, we're down from three medications to one. And less of a dose in that one. Um, his mood is so much more stable. He's just excelling um, with like a nice, even, even mood. And I saw the little boy emerge that I always knew was there. Um, and hot off the press, he just met his behavioral goals for his individual ed plan and very proud of him for his work that he's done. And I'm just so, so grateful for my client and our friend Holly, because if she went to told me about this, my life I'd still be running around in a hamster wheel. So thank you, Holly. And let's hear about your son that stemmed this off. Great. Thank you so much, Shannon. Um, thank you, especially for our friendship that we have now and your guidance as we navigate these waters with our kiddos. A big thanks to all of you watching um, and letting me share a snapshot of our life. Um, and uh, 
into our life of raising a child with ADHD and anxiety. Uh, my goal for you is you will find comfort and hope in our story and in our struggle. Uh, my husband, Malcolm, and I, we have two boys. Jack is our oldest, he's 10, and Cole is eight. Um, Jack was diagnosed with ADHD in kindergarten. And unlike uh, Shannon, we leaned more pro-medication. I just wasn't into the whole natural world. Um, different people would say, you know, give him high amounts of fish oils and probiotics. And quite frankly, I was like, you know, that's really cute that you think some natural supplements are gonna help. Um, you have no idea what's going on in our home on a daily basis. Um, so we did put Jack on stimulant medication and we were very okay with that. Um, and the results were pretty good. Um, it was better at school and home was just okay. It wasn't great because uh, the medications would wear off and we would still have late afternoon and evening to get through. Um, sometimes we gave him more medication in the evenings if we had a baseball game or football practice. Um, last year in third grade is when things started getting significantly worse. Um, he was getting in trouble at school again and home life was uh, starting to go into that chaotic range again. Um, rides from school to home were extremely stressful. Um, his meds had worn off by after school time. He was starving because he wasn't eating lunch, which is one of the side effects of stimulant medications. Um, I would bring food, you know, for the rides home, but sometimes I was just too late um, in picking him up and he was just starving. And so the meltdowns would start on the drive home and they would last like 20 to 30 minutes. It was screaming, crying, kicking the passenger seat from the back seat. Um, and this just put me on edge and, and our younger son just watched it play out day after day. Um, this was the time we decided to increase his medication with no significant change in his behavior. Um, his pediatrician then decided to try a new stimulant medication. Um, and this led to the worst two and a half week of, weeks of our lives. Um, the new medication triggered an anxiety that we had never seen before. He was scared to go into a movie theater, scared in crowds, and uh, worse of all, he started having suicidal thoughts. It was horrible and scary and frustrating all at the same time. Um, we then went to a non-stimulant medication that helped with anxiety, but it didn't help with the ADHD. So back on a stimulant medication we went. Um, now he's taking two medications a day. Um, I'm trying to find something else. This just was not working for us. The side effects were not good and our life still really felt out of control. My husband would get upset and even cry when he saw pictures of Jack because he had dark circles under his eyes and he was so thin. Um, there had to be something else. I was so worried about our son on a day-to-day -day basis that I actually started to go into a depression and started antidepressant medication at that same time as well. Um, then a friend told us or told me about some natural products she had just learned about and I was like mm, not so sure about this whole natural thing but this time I decided I would listen and I would learn um, what we were doing wasn't working and so I decided to be open to this after I learned about these products there was nothing in these products that were going to hurt him so we decided to jump in with both feet um, six weeks six weeks into activating uh, Jack's body we took a leap of faith and we took him off the two ADHD medications Definitely don't recommend this without doctor approval, but it's just what we did. Um, my husband kept saying after he was off the medication, look at how he smiles and laughs now. Um, we are thrilled to say that it's been one year since he has been on those two ADHD medications. Um, he still has ADHD and his brain is awesome, cool, and, and he is wired differently. But he's regulated and he's happy and he smiles and we just have our jack back. Um, school conferences have been amazing this year. Um, I didn't get a call or an email from his fourth grade teacher at all this year um, about behavioral things. Um, our family dynamics have changed as well. He, is no, he no longer sets the thermostat in our house. Um, so thank you so much for letting me share our story. Uh, next, I'm gonna turn it over to Mr. Josh Miles. Um, he is an amazing dad of four kiddos, including a super awesome son who can do some amazing things with a pen. So take it away, Josh. Thanks, Holly. I appreciate that. Um, and thanks, everyone, for joining us on this webinar today. Uh, so my name is Josh. I am uh, the husband of my wife, Camille. And uh, we have four awesome kids. Um, and the oldest of our children, Caleb or CJ, we call him both names. That's his nickname, Caleb Joshua. <laughs> but uh, he, uh, he was diagnosed with autism at three years old. Um, and 
I remember before we even got a diagnosis, my mother-in-law said, hey, I think CJ might have autism because he would line stuff up in a straight line or he would um, stand in one spot and flap his arms and different things like that. Um, I wasn't really familiar with autism, but I was in denial because I knew that my son was going to be the first round draft pick in the NBA, so that couldn't be possible. <laughs> uh, and so um, I was like the dad who, like, no, that's n my son can't have autism. I wasn't super familiar with it, but I just knew that um, – I knew that had some implications that I wasn't comfortable with. Um, and so I was in denial for a while, but the farther along we went, um, the more that it became painfully obvious that something was going on and we needed to try and get him help. Um, and so because we love him, that's what we did. Um, we started the road of getting, started down the road of getting a diagnosis. And when he was um, three, we finally got that diagnosis. And um, that was, it was tough. It was tough just to come to the realization that I must, you know, um, who everything everybody every who I want my son to be um he's gonna be who God has made him to be and I don't get to impose <laughs> my desires on him uh and so um it, it was cool because I mean literally for about 18 months we started getting a ton of therapies we were getting therapies you know 40 hours a week he had all kind of therapists um in our house all the time and uh we would make you know small strides you know two steps forward one step back one step forward two steps back and we were always just kind of crawling along um and I mean, we live the life of, you know, we got a house full of therapists. He was having a rough time, uh, kicking, screaming. We want to help him. We don't know how to help him. And uh, literally, I posted a picture, a picture on Facebook one day. I hadn't really said much about the fact that he had a diagnosis. And a friend of ours saw it. She reached out and she said, hey, um, I've got a friend whose son has autism, but he's making some really cool strides. Um, Y'all should reach out to her. Um, my wife is a pharmacist, but she was not big on medicating him because she knew the effects of medication on young kids and so she didn't want to do that and um literally we uh we got this information about nerf 2 activation and um it changed our lives um my wife was super excited about it i was skeptical because like you know what could something that's not medication do for your son <laughs> do for our son um and um we started him on the uh nerf 2 activation you know supplement and uh literally life changed um at the time he had a six to ten word vocabulary he would hold a pen and with a with a closed fist grip and just stack the letters of his name on top of one another um and you know socially couldn't communicate a lot um and literally we, within 48 hours of him taking the supplement um he slept through the night for the first time and when i say he's up through the night for the first time um what i mean is he wouldn't be up three to four hours in the middle of the night um that was a big change for us it was the first time in about probably six to eight months. Um, and then uh, three weeks after he was on it, you know, I was still skeptical. I'm like, you know, maybe that was, maybe it had something to do with that, but we don't know for sure. Uh, but literally three weeks later, he came into my office where I am now. And he said, hey, daddy, I want to go to the store with you. Um, my wife and I had been talking across the house. I was upstairs. She was downstairs. And we were trying to figure out who was going to the store. I was picked. And, uh, you know, he let me know that he wanted to come. And so I walked out and I said, man, that was a really good job parroting with mom not standing here. Let me go just make sure that she told you to come and say that. And my wife said, no, he's upstairs in his room playing on the iPad. And I said, no, he's not. He's in my office talking to me. You might want to come see this. Um, and ever since then, it's been thing after thing after thing. And it's really removed all skepticism from, um, from me because, I mean, literally, you can't make up a four-year-old talking. <laughs> uh, and, I mean, a kid who didn't have a vocabulary started slowly talking in full sentences and that became normal for us. Um, and that was like huge because we've never been, you know, we don't want to change our son. Um, he is who God has made him to be, but we just want to experience all of who he is. And a big part of that is him just being able to communicate. And so um, we feel like we've achieved that. I mean, his, he's seven now and his speech is phenomenal. Um, even when we first started everything, his therapists were just like, what in the world is going on? Because we didn't tell anybody what we were doing because we knew that we could be biased. Um, and they were like, well, what's going on? Uh, what are y'all doing differently? And so anyway, we just believe that this nerf 2 activation has played a huge role in his success, and we want to help as many families and parents uh, um, honestly have the, see the same thing that we've seen and have the same level of hope that we have. So, um, you know, I'm not going to steal Stephanie's thunder. I'm going to pass it to her and let her share her story because she's got some real cool stuff to say as well. But, um, you know, as y'all hear these stories, it's, um, it's real. It's real, and we just want to provide people with hope. So. Stephanie, take it away. Absolutely, Josh. Thank you so much. And I, I just ditto what he says. I hope you guys see the true um, authentic authenticity of what we're saying to you because 
um, it's emotional for us to tell our stories. And um, it, was, it was a really hard time in our lives of what we're sharing. And we just want you to know and connect with you and say that there's hope on the other side of that. Um, because I was a mom that wasn't feeling like there was any hope. And so I want to gift that, as, as do all of my friends that are on this, we want to gift that to you because there is hope. Um, so my story is I am the mom uh, to three boys and our youngest, he came home to us from the foster care system. Um, and if any of you know about that, um, they're in the foster, these kiddos are in the foster care system for a reason. So they have trauma. Um, he came home to us at five months of age and we fell in love. We pursued adoption and he became ours at uh, the age of one. We really didn't have very much information on his history at all. But what we did know right away is that he has very high needs. Uh, he screamed day and night, day and night. He actually didn't sleep through the night until he was four years old. Um, his scream was an uncurdling scream. Um, it was really hard to settle him and calm him. Um, I, I felt lost, completely lost. I didn't know where to turn or what to do. Um, so we began um, getting involved with some different um, uh, different organizations that uh, were around and we started having occupational therapists, physical therapists, nurses coming in and out of our home. Um, even though that was happening and I, and I literally felt like our front door was a revolving door, um, he was not hitting milestones. Um, so we just continued to search and we were, I was I'm super open-minded, um, super open to different therapies and I was open to what anybody would say to me. Have you tried this? No, but let's go try it. Have you tried this? Nope, but I'm, I'm in. Let's go try it. If it worked for someone else, I I, I had hope in that it would work for us too. But the fact is, is that we were just really trying to survive. Um, in the midst of that, I also took him to several naturopathic doctors. I had had really great success um, with naturopathic doctors in the past. And being a holistic nutritionist, I'm food first, supplements second, um, fill in the gaps of any deficiencies, but medication, heck no, that's not going to be a part of my life. Um, so took him to several naturopathic doctors. Our last one ended us, um, our last naturopathic doctor was specialized in ADHD and autism doing homeopathy. And although we were intensively with him for a year, those words came, which was, I can't help you anymore. And you need to go to the children's hospital. And I, that was, um, that was probably the one day that I felt like the most helpless in my life because um, the team that I had that was working with us, all of them expressed that. Like our toolboxes are empty. We don't have anything else for you. And so as a family that literally we were in crisis mode because we just could not calm this kiddo. And as Holly said, um, Jack is no longer the thermostat. This kid was our thermostat and it was hot. <laughs> it was high. And so we just knew that, um, you know, we just had to go there because we, we had to get out of this space of, of crisis and, and trauma really for our whole family. So at, children, at the Phoenix Children's Hospital, um, our kiddo was diagnosed with fetal alcohol syndrome, which should have been diagnosed way early on, uh, trauma, ADHD, sensory processing disorder, and then a multiple of other diagnoses as well. And you, we can diagnose, uh, he, can, he can come, he's coming you know, with a number of diagnoses, but the fact is, is that we, we just need help. Um, my son was struggling in school with focus, impulsivity, aggressiveness. Uh, he wasn't sleeping. He had a high defiance and overall just was dysregulated. So several years into this journey, um, eventually this holistic girl had to say yes to four medications, four medications that hurt my heart. Um, he was on two stimulants. He was on guampacine at night for the aggressiveness, impulsivity, and to help him sleep, which wasn't helping him sleep, as well as Zoloft for anxiety. Um, I was not okay with any bit of this um, because of, of really what I believed in. But the fact is, is that um, it was survival. It did help. But again, like you've heard, there were side effects to that. And I just could not imagine how this 40 pound body could metabolize and take all of those medications. I fully believe that we have a miracle body that is able to heal and repair when given the right nutrients, um, but we just didn't have an answer for that yet. Um, but it took someone, it took someone to say, hey, have you given this a try? Um, and I had not ever heard of NRF2 activation. Um, when we said yes to NRF2 activation, um, he became a different kid fairly quickly, actually. And I, and I just want to um, go back really quick um, to before saying yes to NRF2 activation, I had written in my journal, um, God, he is yours. He is not mine and please help because we had just ended nine months of cognitive behavior therapy with a woman who specializes in attachment therapy from the foster care system. 
um, she's highly qualified. And our last appointment, again, were those words. I, I don't know what to do for you. You're either um, going to need to go to Texas to go to uh, a type of immersion intensive therapy, or um, I think he's going to end up in a group home because the behavior is so out of control. Uh, no, not okay. This is our little boy. I remember my husband and I not speaking for until the next day <laughs> until my husband's words were, I will cut off my right arm before that kiddo leaves our home. So we we're passionate, we were desperate and open. So interrupt two activation comes into his body and I'll just fast forward right to the end. We are two, almost two years into this. He is off of three of his medications and the one medication that he's still taking has been lowered. My hope, my desire, and my intention is that, that he will eventually be off that medication as well. But here's the fact, he's thriving, our whole family is thriving, and he is doing so much better. And we're able to see him, see him for who he was created to be. And so those are four unique stories. All of us have been impacted by NRF2 activation. And we're so thrilled that you've chosen to join us and listen to our stories. So why do we show up and do this? Why are we sharing this information with you today? And why, do we, why are we making this webinar? And why do we show that emotional side of, of what our lives were like to share that with you? The reason why is because we want to bring that hope to you as well. So just remember, you are not alone in this. Um, please get back to the person that shared this webinar with you and get your questions answered. We also want to invite you to listen to part two of our series, which will really be talking about the product. So if you're here and you're okay with just the information you have, stay there. But I don't think that you are. Everybody wants to know why and what more we can do to better. So that's our part two. Let us walk you through that journey too of what exactly we did to our kiddos and why they are making, um, why they're having the results they're having and why um, we're making an impact out in the community with um, neurological disorders that, that we're making. So, Get those questions answered. It's a pleasure to be with you today. Thank you.